Welcome to Rat Rod Television, your home for thrust, lust, and rust. We're going to take you on a journey into backyards and garages where junkabilly mechanics grab and fab their own cars from whatever they can find. There are no rules in the old school. You can win the brand new Lincoln Power MIG welder in the Rat Rod Build Competition. Throttle down, boys, and get ready for some hair-bending automotive entertainment. Let's go. Right now, we're in the rolling Ratmobile studio headed towards Salt Lake City. You, through the magic of television, are going back to the Rat Rod Studio garage to check out some of the cars entered in the Lincoln Winnemig competition. And we are going to show you some. We can't show you all of them because we don't have enough time. We're going to show you some of the most interesting builds that have been sent in by viewers. So grab a cold one, kick back, and witness for the first time on television a rat parade which has never been shown before on television. This, my friend, is going to be fun. Tonight, you are about to witness a television first. Hi, I'm Jennifer Allen, and welcome to tonight's Ratorama Spectacular. We are going to show you some of the semi-finalists in the Winnemig competition. Tonight's first car was featured in Rat Rod Magazine. It was built by Roger Rentola for $500. My shoes cost more than that. Roger says he built this car in 60 days. The cab is a 51 Ford. It sits on an 82 S15 frame. He cut seven inches from the center. The channel was decided where the rust stopped. The box is a 47 Dodge. He removed seven and a half inches from the center and seven and a half from the length. The engine and tranny came from a 78 Dodge van. The seats are also from a Dodge van, and Roger used a beer keg for the gas tank. He obviously emptied it during the build. Road signs make for an interesting floor. The grill and headlights are 59 Ford. Taillights are from a school bus year unknown. Roger took other parts from his scrap pile and scabbed some freebies. He claims to have spent $500 on the build. We wonder if that includes welding gas and grinding stones. He drives it to all the shows. The longest haul so far is 800 trouble-free miles. We like the NRA sticker on the window, the bullet holes, tire on the roof, the PAP shifter, the duct tape tunnel, and the girls. This next car is called Chasing the Devil. It's a 49 Ford Mutt sent in to us by Jeff Bishop. When Jeff found out his wife had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, he got on Craigslist and hunted down a 49 Ford cab, a 37 Chevy Stove Bolt 216, a 39 Plymouth front axle, a 51 Chevy rear end, and a radiator from a forklift. He paid $600 for the entire ensemble and decided to build a rat rod. So he began work on his car while his wife was getting her chemo treatments. He took out his anger on the metal and it was great therapy. Then he discovered Rat Rod TV in the forums. Jeff used copper for fuel and coolant lines, a keg gas tank, a beer bottle gas gauge, Valvoline signs for the bed, and tunnel. The metal for the roof came from an old washing machine. They drove to the Beatersville show in Louisville and his wife loved it. She dubbed the car Chasing the Devil. Thanks to Rat Rod TV, Jeff now has Rat Rod fever. Well, great story, Jeff. We hope your wife beats the devil and we can't wait to see your next build. <laughs> Larry Pippen spent two years collecting parts for this 36 Dodge, and we love the flathead in this ride. Larry started noticing rat rods at more and more shows and was impressed with the creativity and talent he saw. He also saw a few that he wouldn't go around the block in because of safety issues. That's when Larry started his quest to build a rat rod. He spent two years collecting parts. He purchased a T-bucket frame. He cut and stretched the frame 24 inches. He channeled the 36 Dodge cab six inches and added a new firewall and floor. Larry used a 49 Cadillac instrument cluster and stuffed a 35 Ford car tranny in it and converted it to an open driveline to mate with an old GM rear end. The grill is from a 35 Chevy pickup and slanted to taste. We like the wrench bumper, door sign interior, and the machine gun in the grill. Here's an interesting 4x4 set in by Mick Stein in Wyoming. You don't see many Jeep rock rats, whatever that means. Mick owns a 4x4 shop in Wyoming, so it made sense to build a 4x4 rat. He kept it as low as possible. He's running 40-inch tires on the rear and 33s on the front to maintain a rat rod appearance. The drivetrain is a 500 Caddy. The rear axle is a 10.25 Sterling. The top was chopped four and a half inches and sports a hand-built dash. Mick says he would be honored to see his truck on Rat Rod TV. The truck gets a lot of attention and we can see why. Mick, your rat rocks.
Rat Rod Television is brought to you by Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Chicago Pneumatic, pull the trigger. Ray Vestas, the best in brakes. Seal the deal with Mr. Gaskin. By Monster Transmission, eat my shift. Cop cams, go faster. By trailershopper.com, buy, sell, and trade. By summitracing.com and by Full Contact Wrench. Grip it, don't strip it. Chicago Pneumatic is the official air tool of Rat Rod TV. Do you want to know why? They're built to work and they're built to last. You can pay more for other tools, but you're not going to get more. Chicago Pneumatic is the Rat Rodder's tool of choice. So fill your hand and feel the power. Check out the full line of Chicago Pneumatic products at cp.com slash rr. cp.com slash rr. And pull the trigger on one of these babies. This segment of Rat Rod TV is brought to you by KillBillet.com. Pretty sweet ride so far, don't you think? I like the ones with the rust and the paint and the big gas-sucking engines that have more horsepower than a herd of horny horses. <laughs> I like that one. Let's get this show on the road, so come with me and let's go see some rust. A.J. Rittenberry from Gasburg, Virginia has sent us in some pics of his 41 International. We're talking junkabilly grab and fab here, baby. A.J. says my dad wanted to build something that wasn't all chrome and paint. He wanted something we could drive without worrying about the painted parking lots. So the entire family chipped in and built this 41 International. It sits on a custom handmade frame. It's powered by a 350 Chevy sporting an Edelbrock intake and car. It has a 350 tranny, 9-inch Ford rear end, 41 International grill, and bed made from an old fire truck. There's a 59 Chevy axle up front, and the headlights are from an old snow plow. Custom headers are made from scrap with pang tangs from an old tractor. They brazed around the cab to cover the chop lines and used copper pennies to fill in the holes. They used osfo acid to give it a natural look and coated it with flats clear. Most of the parts were donated, scabbed from junkyards, or picked up at swap meets. All said and done, they have about $4,500 in the bill, but to them, it's absolutely priceless. Nice job, AJ. Charlie Hall is still working on his 48 Ford. So far, he has spent $200. Check out the grill on this Junkabilly Jewel. Charlie's still working on his 48 Ford project. He cut and grafted a Nova frame and kept the rear springs a Nova tilt steering column. Most of the other parts he used came from a donor 250 Ford. He's running a 394 speed and custom built oil pan. Charlie scrounged parts from other cars and trucks to get this far. This is Junkabilly grab and fab at its finest and we love the grill on this baby, especially the tasteful placement of the running lights. In true rat rod fashion, Charlie has spent nine months on his build and he spent about $200 this far. Keep us posted, Charlie. We can't wait to see the truck finished. Whatever you do, don't paint it. Here's another car that was also featured in Rat Rod Magazine. Doc Bort Street Fighter. And Doc drives around St. Louis every damn day. The Street Fighter is a tilted 41 Ford truck with a 78 Mustang front end, a Chevy 355, a Turbo 350 tranny, a 22-inch reverse chop cab, 1964 Impala taillights, rattle can wide whites, and it was featured in Rat Rod Magazine. Now, Doc's car was a Carolina's dirt track racer before he got it in 2008, and he has rebuilt or replaced everything except the transmission. Doc does all of his own repairs, fabrication, welding, and design in his driveway. One thing he would like to mention is that since he has owned the truck, it has never been towed. It may have spent the night away from home once or twice, but he's always been able to fix it and get it home. Doc has about five grand in it. We really like the teeth and the skyscraper headers. Nice job, Doc. Danny Dockery stuffed a 429 big block in this 47 International. 
He spent about six grand on it and just won Best No Billet at a recent car show. Dad bought the 47 International for 200 smacks. The 36 Chevy bed was given to him by a guy in Reno and was shortened 16 inches. It sits on a 54 Ford frame. Danny cut the frame behind the cab and Frankenstein the rear half of the 65 Ford. His son donated a 429 big block. The bumper is 35 Ford. The wheels were also donated. All in all, the build was just under six grand and parts came from 13 vehicles. Danny says if it weren't for good friends donating stuff, it would not have been possible. It took about 10 months to build. The car gets a lot of attention. It's like driving a one-man parade, according to Danny. He says he's been to six car shows and has won Best No Billet, People's Choice, and Best Rat Rod. Now, Danny wants to take the car to Viva Vegas this year, but he's afraid of being turned away. Well, you're right, Danny. The tires will do you in. We like the anti-paint and front bumper. Steve, have you ever seen a steal for a gas tank? No, I haven't. Well, Jimmy Martin has from Alabama. In fact, he used one on his 41 International called the Bounty Hunter. Jimmy claims this truck will be the king of rat rods when it is finished. We're showing it because we've never seen a still used for a gas tank. It's a 41 International sitting on Jimmy's custom frame. The Bounty Hunter will sport coilovers, drop axle, Willwood brakes, and a lot of off-road tech to top off the build. As if you can't tell, Jimmy is from Alabama. The still is a dead giveaway. He should have called the truck Moonshine. Are we correct in assuming the grill is off a Massey Ferguson tractor? Can't wait to see your final product, Jimmy. Please don't paint it. Time has done that for you. Isn't this fun? More rats than you've ever seen on TV at one time? <laughs> well, we love breaking the rules. That's what rat routing is all about. Stretching the limits. Taking it as far as you can. Doing something that nobody else has ever done before. Well, here are a few cars that have definitely crossed the boundaries. Strip it. There's only one tool you need to remove tough nuts. Rip it. Don't strip it. The revolutionary new tri-point jaw changes the game. Rip it. Don't strip it. Ordinary adjustable wrenches only grab on two points. The new full contact wrench applies pressure to three sides and is guaranteed not to slip or strip. Rip it. Don't strip it. The more pressure, the tighter it grips. Make full contact today at fullcontactwrench.com. Rip it. Don't strip it. High performance for life with MLS head gaskets from Mr. Gasket. Engineered for high compression, turbo, supercharged, and nitrous engines. MLS is the multi-layer leak-proof answer guaranteed to seal in performance. Lock, lock it in for life with MLS from Mr. Gasket. XL, the GMHEI corrected distributor cap. Eliminate crossed ignition wires and dress up your engine for a clean look. A plug and play fit with ultra high dielectric strength to resist arc through. The GMHEI corrected distributor cap. New from XL. It just keeps getting better, doesn't it? We're foregoing the Essex build episode tonight for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, the team leader uh, screaming for a new pair of heads. And the rest of the guys completely blew the build budget in the first four episodes. <laughs> if you have small children in the room, cover their ears. What you're about to see is rated R for rust. Reality Garage will continue as soon as we find some money. But until then, you're going to have to look at another batch of cars. Have a nice time. Is a 29 Brookville sent in to us by Mark Esposito, a Navy veteran from Houston. Hey, isn't that where the Desperate Housewives live? Mark didn't send a lot of photos of his car, but he did send a lot of pictures of Mizzou Zincaholic taken by Johnny Jackson. Mark found the Brookville on display at the Pomona Roadster Show and bought a 29 body and frame and hauled it back to Ridgecrest. He built the Roadster in his spare time in his garage. It took Mark three years to do the build, and he concentrated on safety. Parts came from swap meets, eBay, networking with fellow hot rodders, and of course, junkyards. Mark moved to South Texas and drives the Brookville, weather permitting. He needs a top. Mark says maybe Rat Rod TV can do a feature on how to build a Roadster top. Now, Mark is a Navy veteran and was badly injured in a parachute jump. But we want to thank Mark and all of our military service men and women for their service. Back to Mizzou Zincaholic. Nice tats. And we want to know how her hair stays up in that roadster. Is it the moose or the wind? Reed Lever 
Overton just sold a Chevy truck on RatRawTV.com, but we're showing it anyways because we like the wedding photo. Reed found this 46 Chevy pickup in Southern California. It sits on a C310 frame and is powered by a 250 inline six. He rewired it, replaced the gauges, lights, and miscellaneous engine parts. Now, Reed was in a hurry to complete the truck before the wedding date, so the whole family pitched in. He says it's a good thing the wedding was only five miles from his house because that's all the radiator could stand. The truck was the motivation for the vintage style wedding that included old oil can vases for centerpieces. Now with five months of marriage under his belt, Reed has found out he's going to be a new daddy and was forced to sell the truck. He listed it on the new swap meet page at ratrodtv.com and sold it in two weeks. Congratulations on the sale, Reed, the wedding, and the new baby. This next entry comes to us from Jim Foster. Jim is an auto tech instructor from upstate New York. It's a 36 Cadillac LaSalle, built by students. These are some bright boys, and they're using the Lincoln Welder. This 36 Cadillac LaSalle is a hands-on classroom project. The boys started by removing the body from the frame and scab parts from an 82 Olds. They used the rear axle and front end from the 88. The body was lowered four inches, they used an 80s truck steering column, and the kids installed all new brakes and lines and master cylinder from a donated 88 Buick. It sports a Chevy 350 that they bought for 200 bucks. The headers are student made, of course, and the shifter is pretty slick. It's made out of a snap-on wrench and a couple of sockets. <laughs> the wrench probably costs more than the motor. They have about 1,200 in the car so far, and Jim believes that doing a rat rod is one of the best ways to teach kids the basic fundamentals in auto repair and theory. It is something they can try firsthand and not worry about making things look pretty. Now, many of these boys have never touched a welder before, let alone use one. When I first caught your show, I was excited to see that the world of rat rods is being brought to the world. Keep it up. Well, thanks, Jim. We're doing just that. Rat Rod TV is planning a high school rat rod build-off. So if your school program is interested in joining in on the competition, drop us a line at ratrodtv.com. We love the grill on your car, Jim, and you really should get in the Chicago Pneumatic Program. We sent them your story, and it might wind up in their newsletter. Get yeah, cheaper we, <laughs> yeah. we could do some really rad part of this Actually, we just saw Shirley from uh, Laverne and Shirley. It was good to see her again. <laughs> it was good to yeah. see her again. Yeah. We really enjoyed using your garage today, Steve. Thank you so much. Anytime. Come back again. Sure. Hope you enjoyed our parade of rats and our television ratorama. We're going to continue our search for more junkabilly grabbing fab rat rottery because you never know what you're going to find out there in these great rust infested United States. <laughs> now get out there and hunt down some precious tin and turn it into something disrespectful. We've received thousands of photographs of cars that viewers have sent in. You can never send enough. Keep those cards and letters coming. When we come back, we're gonna reveal some hate mail. Hoorah, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. Get your fat butt back in that chair. Rat Rod TV going to be right back. And we expect you to be here when we get here. Don't make me have to come over to your house, buddy. trailer for my motorcycle and was about to go out looking for one when I realized I gotta sell my old one. Good thing I found TrailerShopper.com. I can do both at the same time right from home. At TrailerShopper.com I can shop for a livestock trailer if I needed one, a race car, snowmobile, cargo, or even a horse trailer. Trust me, if you're looking to buy or sell any kind of trailer new or used, you can do it at TrailerShopper.com. And sellers, your first classified ad is free. Even free one ads. TrailerShopper.com. If you would like to see your build here on Rat Rod TV, 
Send us a one-page build story and make the photos 8x10 JPEG, please. And make sure your videos have original music or permissions. We hope you enjoyed our Ratarama Parade of Rust. What I want to know is who's cleaning up the rat <laughs> at the end of this parade. Thanks, Jenny. I'm the one cleaning up at the end of the parade today. We're going to forego today's entry in the Lincoln Win a MIG competition because we're running short of time. We wanted to show you as many cars as we could. As a reminder, Marv at Chicago Pneumatic is preparing a special issue of the Cranked Up newsletter featuring all rat rods. So go to cp.com and check it out. You might see a picture of your car there. Also, the Essex build will continue in the next episode because we had to lay out $700 for welding gas and grinding stones. And there wasn't any money left for front end parts. So we were forced to take drastic action and scab some front end parts. And here's how that caper went down. The spring story, the story is that uh, we've finally located a spring because we've got no budget and our chief producer wouldn't put any money out to buy a spring. So here we are. Now we've got to steal my homie's spring here. My spring. And we're going to take it over and put it on our car because uh, for some reason uh, the program cannot afford a $50 spring <laughs> Craigslist. I'm about to choke on my tongue. And so uh, obviously we've got no budget, so here we are. But as it falls, this is the exact spring we were looking for. We've been walking in circles for months. How many bolts are in it? One? Just that one. You're kidding me. No. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> He's being molested. No. Yeah, get the bottom though. Oh. Like that. There's a spring. Put it back together, Gump. <laughs> Here you go. Holy. Did you remember how it went back? <laughs> um, pay him. Yeah. Purchase. He's done. We just robbed the whole front end. Now we took the mounts off so we can use these older mounts instead of new. They're nice and uh, <laughs> weathered like the rest of the car. The car's almost as weathered as the boss wants now because um, it's been sitting in the rain for three <laughs> months. It's rusted like the rest of it. So now we know it's what we wanted, whether we wanted it or not. <laughs> we have poached are spring and are ready to start building a car with no budget but that's okay I'm gonna go ahead and wing this thing like a chicken wing and make it happen and we're gonna get her done as they say hang on let me do this right we're gonna get her done this rant comes from Kent Blank in Tucson Arizona he writes I hate the term rat rod it makes hot rods and traditional hot rods sound like crappy cars and it has guys building crap instead of cool cars. This show will keep people calling all hot rods that are not candy painted brat rods. It's like calling people who live in manufactured homes trailer trash. I will not watch your show and I will tell my friends not to watch your program. I'm going to boycott it. Well, Kent, I forwarded your rat to the editors of Rat Rod Magazine for a response because they're a lot more polite than I am. And here's what they had to say. The beauty of the automotive world is that you can express yourself any way you want. There is a scene for everyone. As far as rat rods, the term is no longer demeaning. It is an evolving hot rod community fueled by creativity. Like it or not, rat rods are becoming a legitimate part of the hot rod universe. Well, tell us what you think. Drop us a line at ratrodtv.com. Personally, I think you haven't arrived until you've been boycotted. Well, we're out of gas again. Remember to go to ratrodtv.com, check out the new swap meet, and remember, if you're going to build it, build it safe, or don't build it at all. Rat Rod Television is brought to you by Lincoln Electric, the welding experts, Chicago Pneumatic, pull the trigger, Ray Vestas, the best in brakes, seal the deal with Mr. Gaskin, by Monster Transmission, eat my shift, cop cams, go faster, by trailershopper.com, buy, sell, and trade. By summitracing.com and by full contact wrench. Grip it, don't strip it. Okay, that's gonna be funny. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay.
This next car sent in to us is called Chasing the Devil. It's a 49 Ford Mutt sent in to us by Jeff Bishop. Watch this. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> really, I was stuck. My wire was stuck on this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. And voila. <laughs> High performance for life with MLS head gaskets from Mr. Gasket. Engineered for high compression, turbo, supercharged, and nitrous engines. MLS is the multi-layer leak-proof answer guaranteed to seal in performance. performance. Lock it in for life with MLS from Mr. Gasket. Excel, the GMHEI corrected distributor cap. Eliminate crossed ignition wires and dress up your engine for a clean look. A plug and play fit with ultra high dielectric strength to resist arc through. The GMHEI, GMHEI corrected distributor cap. New from Excel. Got the ride. Now get the edge at SummitRacing.com. Find parts fast with customizable search options. Shop by keyword, brand name, make, model, and more. Plus, find great deals in the Saving Central section. Get parts quick and easy with online checkout and fast shipping. And get the job done right with helpful instruction sheets, part suggestions, and a huge tech, huge tech archive. It's all at SummitRacing.com, your ultimate power tool.